Hi everyone, this is a quick video about the making of my latest feature film, The Payoff, which has been up on YouTube now for about a month. Uh, and, and I wanted to just kind of get all these thoughts down about the making of it, sort of how it came to be and what I learned from making the film. And uh, some of these I've already shared before, but I wanted to kind of consolidate all these down into one place and, and put them into this one video. So as I've mentioned before, The Payoff started as, uh, as an idea I had at the beginning of the summer of 2021 when I wanted to get back to making feature films, you know, for the first time in, I think, 18 years or whatever. And I had had the idea to do it as an improv film, and I wanted to do a sort of a, a crime drama uh, film, um, you know, something in that style. And similar, it was kind of, you know, similar to some of the short films that I've uh, been making over the years. But uh, what I found after I had started working on it was that I needed some more uh, time to sort of develop the ideas, to see where it would go, to see the, to ultimately find the approach that I could take that would make it possible to make this movie. And that's why I put it on the back burner and then I ended up making Work From Home and Endless August, which were both also improvised films, uh, feature films, but that took a much more ex experimental uh, direction. And by doing that, by taking that approach, it showed me, it kind of showed me the way back to how I could make this film uh, to make the payoff and do it, you know, take what I'd learned from making those other two features and apply it to this type of story and, uh, and, and it kind of showed me the way of being able to make it. So I don't think I could have made the payoff if I hadn't had the, at least in the way that I did, if I hadn't had the experience that I got from making um, Work From Home and Endless August over the summer. So I kind of picked it back up in the, I believe it was um, probably early November, I, I, I want to say. It was, uh, I think I kind of began thinking about it again in October and seeing where I could uh, go with things. And then in early November, that's when I sort of picked it back up again and, uh, and, and uh, started filming. And, and uh, what I liked about the improv approach was that it allowed me to structure the film as I went along. I had an outline, of, a basic outline of the, uh, the story, the characters, uh, development, and some of the scenes that I wanted to get. But what I found as I went along was that as new ideas came up, the improv approach allowed me to incorporate those ideas into the in, into the story into the film and so it took nine days total to shoot now I think it I scripted this if had this been a scripted film uh, or it, had I had a more um, even more structured outline I I really think I could have probably shot it in about half as many days but a lot of that was just you know going out and getting a few more shots that I needed here or there. So, for example, the very first scene that I shot was at the racetrack out of me, you know, my character looking into the racetrack and, you know, reflecting on how he's gotten himself into this mess. And when I filmed that day, uh, you know, I, I, I got a few establishing shots of the racetrack, but I actually went back on the very last day. This was after I pretty much, I had almost like signed off on the final cut of the film. And I decided I, I just needed a few more shots to really, com you know, to, to, to kind of complete that sequence. And so I went back and, and got those. And um, so that, you know, that counted as a day of filming, even though I was there for maybe, you know, not even half an hour, just grabbing a few shots that I, I put in. But that's, that's the kind of uh, thing that can happen when you're doing an improv film like this. You know, as things come up, you have the freedom to go back and... Uh, get shots that you want and work them into what you've what you've already got, and I. So I, I think that you know one thing I've learned from this is that by having a more structured outline, I don't think it means having to give up any of the creative freedom that improv allows. But at the same time, it, it can help you get everything you need. You know when you're when you're there. Um, but the issue with the racetrack scene specifically that I'll mention and, and why I went back and got these shots is that on the day that I filmed, the, the first time I was filming there, there was some, uh, there, there, was a, there was an event going on, um, on on the field, basically, out on the track. And so the establishing shots 
really didn't fit with the idea of a character just coming from, you know, watching the races. It was, uh, it wouldn't have really, it just wouldn't, the, the, you know, the shots with the, the crowds and everything there, and there was like a sporting event going on or something, it wouldn't have fit with it. So when I went back, it was during a weekday morning, uh, got there real early in the morning, and it was you know, very empty, kind of desolate, you know, deserted looking, except for a few uh, construction vehicles that were out there. So I thought that was much more appropriate uh, for, for this. So that's, that's, that's the kind of thing you can't always really control that. You know, sometimes if you're, if you're shooting guerrilla style like this and you um, get to the location and you, you can't always control. So that's, that's one of the reasons that I, I went back to get these shots. Uh, also to help um, add a little bit more variety to it. Because visually, when, it, when you start shooting, um, you know, sometimes you start with what you've got, or you start with a particular image, like in this case, my character looking through the fence uh, at, at the racetrack, but then, you know, you realize you need a little bit more uh, variety, so you go back and find what works. Anyway, the rest of the film was shot, you know, pretty similar to that. Uh, you know, I won't go through all of the scenes, but you can see there was, there was a number of different locations that I used, and they had, uh, you know, I, was, I would usually have access for like a day or two, or, you know, sometimes like the stuff I did driving around at night, that was, a, that was a one day of filming right there. Um, but overall, you know, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Of course, I, I should mention the uh, voiceover narration. Now, that was, that was scripted. I did not improvise that, you know, as I was looking at the film or anything. That uh, voiceover narration was scripted. I was drawing on, you know, if you think back to um, a lot of the crime movies, a lot of the great crime movies that have that sort of character voiceover. I mean, you go back all the way to like the film noir pictures, uh, that sort of thing. That was kind of where I was drawing, what I was drawing on with that. But it also comes from the uh, one person films that I've, the short films that I've been making over the years where I've done a lot with um, uh, voiceover narration. and. So I kind of I felt like it kind of came together in this project. It was a good a good fit for this project, you know, to take that approach with, and uh, I think I think it kind of worked here. Um, but yeah, it was uh, you know there was a lot of uh, I had to kind of think think creatively on my feet, so to speak, when we were out on locations and uh, thinking about ideas that you know certain images that would be interesting for the film or certain ideas that came out of. The locations or you know like there's a, a scene in the film uh it's a, basically it's a dream sequence where the character is has fallen asleep in his office and is uh you know dreaming that he's down by the waterfront and being chased by this kind of unseen you know menace uh menacing presence and that was that sequence uh was entirely done on the spur of the moment when we were filming down at the waterfront and i thought it would be interesting to kind of have me running through some of these different backdrops and things like that. So that's partly how a location can also inspire ideas very much on the spot. You know, this is like improv within improv. You go down there to, you know, with a, with a, with a broad outline of what you're trying to do, and then uh, you can find even new, uh, an, an entirely new ideas uh, that, that come out of these locations that you never would have anticipated. Uh, yeah, it. one thing about this too, when I went to edit the film and release it, uh, I, I found myself going back and making, you know, little, like kind of tweaking it here and there, you know, adding a little line of dialogue, removing a line of dialogue, re-recording a line of dialogue, adding a little bit of music here or there, you know, trimming a frame here and there. So it definitely became a project that had a lot of, um, you know, I, I, I guess I would even say it has Im improv in the post-production in the sense that it's not like you have a strict cutting continuity that you're following when a very, you know, you're not just cutting to like a script. You, you really find yourself trying to find little things at work, you know, adding something here, taking something out there. Um, but eventually you have to sign off on it. And that is something else that, you know, it, I, I won't say that I learned it with this project, but I was reminded of it, certainly. You just have to say, all right, this is it. You know, there's, I, I can keep tweaking it, I can keep making these little changes here and there, but at the end of the day, you have to eventually sign off on it and release it. So I did. And, uh, you know, like I said, I've really uh, appreciated the response. Um, you know, everybody who's watched it, commented on it, shared it, that, that uh, means a lot. And, uh, you know, now it's out there, now it'll live out there, and hopefully, you know, people will find it. So, yeah, that's a bit about the making of 
the payoff, what I learned from making the payoff. I think I probably will try to make another similar film, uh, similar in the sense of kind of taking a look at the genre, the crime genre again, which I enjoy working with. I, I could see myself returning to that soon uh, for a future project. Um, anyway, I hope this, as always, when I record this type of video, I just hope it'll be of some use to somebody who may be th thinking about making a feature uh, film entirely on their own, entirely DIY, zero budget, uh, you know, the way I do it. And uh, maybe it'll be of some use, give you some, uh, some things to think about, hopefully. Uh, anyway, other than that, uh, you know, it's uh, back to work as uh, we move into 2022. And I'll start, uh, you know, working on some new projects that I'll hopefully have some updates on soon. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will talk to you later.